Hello and welcome back. In this video we'll be making a few metal or mechanical pieces, um, kind of like the things you can see here, so uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, we'll start things off with a simple lever, and for this example I'll be making just the one lever, though uh, I have provided a couple of different variants uh, just in case you'd like to make a whole row of them. Anyway, once we've cut out the image, we'll then need to glue that to some thin corrugated cardboard. And uh, here I am doing just that. Then, while that's drying, um, we'll cut out a piece of the handle texture that's one and a half inches long. And uh, we'll also need to cut away roughly half of the wooden part. So, uh, there we go. Something like that. Next, Starting with the wooden end, we'll, uh, we'll roll that into a tight tube, uh, then unravel it, and, uh, and then apply some glue to the back. All we need to do then is roll the piece back up, um, doing our best to keep the top and bottom level, and, uh, and when we're done, it should end up looking something like this. Okay, now that the first piece is dry, we can cut that out with a sharp knife, and then it's just a simple matter of applying a tiny spot of hot glue to the end of the lever, and, uh, and then gluing it in place. And there you go. With any luck, we should end up with something like that. Okay, so on its own it might be a little fragile, so I personally like to glue small pieces like this to a base, um, like this one you can see here. Alternatively, you can also mount some of the floor and wall texture onto some thin cardboard and, uh, and glue those into a kind of L shape, like this. And that will allow us to glue the levers directly onto the wall, um, as you can see on this piece. So yeah, they're fairly easy to make and uh, I might put this one to use in my, uh, in my next little encounter booklet. Okay, next are these little square pieces and uh, we can use these to represent things like magical locks, mechanical puzzles, riddle inscriptions, and all that kind of thing. And in this example, we're just going to glue one of those to some thin cardboard, um, like so, and, uh, and then trim it to size. Then, for this next part, we're going to make a small plinth. So we'll need a piece of foam board, and a piece of thin corrugated cardboard, and, uh, and both of these need to be one inch square. Plus, we'll also need a bit of polystyrene, or another piece of foam board, and that's been cut to three quarters of an inch square. Then we're going to wrap the smaller piece in some of the pillar texture from episode 2, um, glue that all the way around, and uh, we should end up with something that looks like this. Then we can wrap some of the plain stone texture around the cardboard and the foam board, um, like so. And all that's left to do is glue one on top of the other, and, uh, and last of all, glue our decorative piece on top. So, there you go. This is the kind of thing we're aiming for. But uh, just like the levers, you could glue them to a floor tile, or a wall, or, uh, or whatever you like. Okay, so now we're going to move on to one of the cages. And uh, for these, we'll need to cut out one of the base pieces, and, uh, and then glue that to some thin corrugated cardboard. Then all we need to do is cut that out, and uh, it's up to you whether you want to keep the floor texture or not, but uh, in this example, we'll not be needing it. The next thing we'll need to do is glue some of the metal texture around several small drinking straws. So, something like this, though uh, you could also use toothpicks or similar if, uh, if you've not got any of these to hand. And in this example, I'm going to cut 12 of those to one and a quarter inch lengths. Though, uh, you can of course vary this height if you want shorter or taller cages. Okay, so once all that's done, we can start gluing these metal bars in place. And as you can see, I'm positioning these on top of the little rivets that I've drawn on the texture itself. So, there you go. Something like that. Anyway, we'll just need to repeat that process around the entire piece, and uh, we should end up with this kind of thing. Then, all we need to do is take one of the top pieces, which, uh, which I've already glued to some cardboard and cut to size, and, uh, and glue that on top. And there you have it. There's our rusty metal cage. And uh, as you'll see in a few seconds, um, it should be plenty big enough to house most regular sized figures. However, if you want to make something a bit bigger, or, uh, or maybe partition off one side of a dungeon room for example, then uh, I've also supplied this texture here. And just like the cage itself, we can stick that to some cardboard, then glue on a few metal bars, and, uh, and then add a second strip on top. 
And that should allow us to make things like this, which, uh, which like I say, we can maybe use to make prisons or vaults and, uh, and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I, uh, I'm looking forward to see what people do with this one. Right then, next we're going to have a go at making a few pipes. And uh, for each piece, we'll need to cut out two ends and one wheel. And, uh, and we'll then glue those to some thin cardboard. Like so. We'll also need to cut out one of these metal plates here and glue that to some thin corrugated cardboard and, uh, and then cut all of those to size. And the last thing we'll need from this page is two of these strips here. So uh, I've gone ahead and cut those out as well. Okay, the last thing we'll need to get ready are three different size drinking straws, um, all of which have been wrapped in the plain metal texture. Then we're going to cut the larger one to a length of one and a quarter inches the middle sized straw to a half inch and the tiny one to around an eighth of an inch. Okay, so now for the assembly. So the first thing we'll need to do is take one of the small strips, uh, apply some glue to the back and, uh, and then wrap that around the end of the largest straw. So here you can see me doing just that and uh, we're aiming for something like this. Okay, now we'll do exactly the same thing for the other end. So I'll apply some glue to the back of the strip, uh, wrap it around the end of the tube, and uh, it should end up looking like that. Then we can take both of the end pieces, um, apply some hot glue to the inside of the straw, and uh, simply glue one of those in place, and then do the same again for the other end. Next, we'll take the metal plate and the regular size drinking straw, and uh, we'll glue the straw to the centre of the plate. And there you go. And finally, we'll also need to take the small wheel, uh, apply a tiny blob of hot glue to the underside, and glue the small straw in the middle. Right then, for the final part of the assembly, we'll apply some hot glue to the inside of this straw, and, uh, and then glue that near the end of the main pipe. So, something like what you can see here. Then, if you'd like to add a valve to the pipe, you can also glue the small metal wheel to the opposite side. And there you have it, there's the finished piece. However, I am going to glue that to a base, and uh, here's one I prepared earlier, but uh, I'm just going to use a glue stick for this, and, uh, and glue it close to one end. And there we go, now it really is finished. Okay, so if everything's gone according to plan, this is what it should look like when placed on top of a tile. And uh, as you can see, the idea is for the far end of the pipe to finish in a similar place to the edge of the outer wall. And these should come in pretty handy when I eventually get around to making some sewer tiles. Okay, the final thing we're going to have a go at today is a simple lift. And for this, we'll first need to cut out one of the chain textures, though uh, when doing this, we'll also need to score a line down the middle. So I'll just finish trimming that to size, and, uh, and then fold it down the scored line. Then we can take a piece of cereal box type cardboard, and, uh, and cut off a very thin strip. Next we'll apply some glue to the back of the chain texture, uh, just using the trusty glue stick. And then glue the cardboard strip in the middle of one side of the chain, if that makes sense. Basically, we're aiming to have this strip run down the centre of the piece once it's been folded in half. So, something like this, and uh, as you can see, that tiny strip of cardboard just gives it a bit of extra strength. Okay, once we've got both of those made, all we need to do then is cut them into 3 inch lengths. Then, we can take the cage bottom with the wooden floor, uh, glue that to some thin single corrugated cardboard, and, uh, and trim that to size. Right then, there are a few different ways you can assemble something like this, and uh, the first way is to simply glue one of the chains to each corner. Alternatively, you could slope all four of them in towards the centre, and uh, add a tiny blob of hot glue to the point where they all join at the top. But uh, in this example, I'll be doing something in between, as uh, I'm aiming for something that's both accessible, as well as being reasonably sturdy. So, as you can see, I'll apply some glue to one end of the chain, but uh, when sticking it to the corner of the base, I'll actually tilt it towards the right a little, using another chain as a guide, so that uh, when they're both in place, they'll form a kind of A shape. And there you go, something like that. 
So if I just quickly glue the second one in place, um, you can now see the kind of thing we're aiming for. Okay, I'll really speed this next part up as uh, it's exactly the same process for the other side and, uh, and then we'll glue the tops of the chains together. Though, uh, when doing this, do be careful not to burn your fingers. Okay, so that's that done and, uh, and this is how it should look at this stage. Right then, as you can probably tell, the top is still a little flimsy at the moment so uh, we're just going to insert one of the tiny straws between the two sets of chains. So the first thing I'll do is cut that to size and, uh, and then just use the glue gun to secure it in place. Anyway, apologies for veering out of shot for most of that, but uh, here's the finished piece. And yeah, it, uh, it might look better if all the chains were slopping towards the centre, but uh, as I say, I've gone for a more playable piece with this one and, uh, and one that allows for the easy placement of models. So uh, yeah, I'm afraid that's it for another episode. Um, as always, here's a photograph of some of the new pieces in action, and uh, if you take a look towards the back of the image, you can also see how we're able to combine some of these new bits and pieces to, uh, to make a few weird contraptions. Anyway, as I say, that's it for this one, so thanks for watching, and bye for now.